All right, uh, welcome everybody to our second day of the localized virtual career fair. Uh, we're kicking off to the, these sessions today with Ismail Sanchez from uh, NRC, Norwegian Refugee Council. Uh, I believe Ismail has prepared a presentation for us. Um, so we're very excited to have you today. We're very interested to learn more about NRC, about uh, opportunities and to hear advice that you could uh, hopefully give some of our um, uh, recent graduates about how to get into the field and uh, just general advice that you see uh, when you're interviewing or when you're talking to people uh, uh, coming into uh, new jobs. Um, so without delaying any further, Ismail, I, uh, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Um, so yeah, very, very happy and very thankful to, to be invited today to join this career fair. Um, my name is Ismail. I am recruitment advisor for NRC um, and I work uh, in the Middle East region. Specifically, I provide support for Jordan countries, uh, sorry, for Jordan, Iraq and SRO, which is Syria Response Office. Um, and I'm here also joined by my colleague uh, Lama Mala from the NRC Jordan office, she's an HR specialist, that she will join me in the question and answer sections in case you have specific questions about Jordan that she might be able to, to give a, a better context. And um, yeah, I'll start with the presentation. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have some time for any questions you may have. So yeah, let's start. Great. I'm gonna now share the screen. Um, I think it's this. Okay. Perfect. We can, we can see your screen inside. Good. Thank you. So, welcome again. Um, I already did the presentation of myself in terms of the presentation or, or the topics we will discuss today. Um, basically, we will like you to have an understanding of what's NRC history, and values, um, our work in Jordan, that can be interesting for you to know, and how to join us. So, uh, starting with history, so we have to go back to the 1940s, back in the days after the World War. Um, this is a picture of Berlin. So, in this context, sorry, in this context, there was around 15 million refugees a complete devastation in, in many cities like, like this one. And that's why uh, in, Nor in Norway uh, was founded an organization called Help to Europe. So uh, still back in the day, Norway was a, a poor country, but managed to fundraise uh, more money than actually we have been able to do in modern times. So that was a, a critical moment in, in NRC history and Europe history. And to give further context on this, and also what is NRC today, I have a video from our CEO and other colleagues that are gonna talk you through the NRC history. Uh, sorry, Ismail, I'm just uh, going to jump in because actually the, we can't hear any uh, volume. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Let me see if I can fix something here. Mm. 
Just mind, maybe we can. Uh, yeah, sorry. I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be easier to share the video. Sorry, I'll just move to the next. It's fine. Um, but I'm happy to share the video later on if anyone is interested. Yes, in, please. In I think that would be. Uh, I think that would be great. And what I'm gonna do is towards the end of the session, I'm gonna post a link of the NRC page on localized, and on that page you can easily share uh, videos and share uh, links with uh, with our uh, with our listeners. Great, that sounds good. No problem. So I'll move to the next, um, which is basically to talk you through the NRC mission. And uh, we are an organization that works to protect the rights of displaced and vulnerable people during crisis. So we do this through three main pillars, which is programs, advocacy, and rosters. So in programs, we provide the assistance to meet the immediate needs that refugees may have and prevent further displacement and contribute to durable solutions. Advocacy is all about striving for the rights of those whose voices need to be heard. And Rosters is basically a very interesting platform where we gather talent from many different um, specialties and working as a strategic partner uh, to the UN United Nations, we can provide these specialists to be deployed when needed and when the need arise in any crisis. So the context where our work takes place is again, very challenging situations, armed conflicts, where rights are challenged, where people is facing very hard situations in their lives. Um, the right, as a rights-based organization, we are committed to the principles of humanity, neutrality, independence, and impartiality. So, yeah, again, who do we support at NRC? Refugees, IDPs, which is an acronym for internal displaced people. So, they mean, so this means within a country where maybe there are areas where there's a war or a conflict. So people might need to displace to other regions of that country uh, and host communities. This refers to, for instance, in Jordan, as you may know, um, um, we host different communities from other countries that at this time are under armed conflict. And um, yeah, so as said before, through our programs, we provide an assistance to meet immediate needs prevent further displacement and contribute to durable solutions. Durable solutions is a term we use a lot in not only NRC, but in the NGO sector. And it means basically to provide means to those who have been under conflict or distress. So in the future, they can be independent and have um, decent life by themselves without needing to depend on the aid help for the rest of their life. Um, again, advocacy, basically to make sure that the rights of refugees and internal displaced people are heard, where they need to be heard in the international forums, where things can change and change can happen. And again, the, the rosters. So national and international staff who is a specialist in their field and they can go and, and be deployed to help our missions around the world. In terms of our values, so we have four values in NRC. Dedicated, that means we identify ourselves as an organization that has a mission and strategy and a value and that is committed to put displaced people first in our work. Inclusive means that we involve the relevant actors and staff that can be affected by our decisions. So before we make important decisions, we make sure that we have consulted with all the actors that could be affected or involved in that decision. Innovative means that we stay open to new directions and we stay proactive in balancing the opportunities and the risks we might face. And finally, accountable. Accountable means that we are there to what we do and we are committed, committed to being able to account for our actions. So after that 
quick introduction on what does NRC. I wanted to go and show you what's the work we do in Jordan. Um, so since 2012, NRC has worked to build the resilience of Syrian refugees in Jordan and invest in the Jordanian communities that host them. So NRC supports Syrian refugees in Satari and Azraq refugee camps, as well as vulnerable refugees and Jordanians in North and Central Jordan, that's Irbid, Jarash, uh, Mafrak, and Amman governorates. Since 2012, Jordan has accepted hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees fleeing from conflict. And as of May 2020, we have registered around 6,170,000 ,000 Syrian refugees in Jordan, um, of which 500,000 live in host communities. Um, most refugees have been able to secure their legal status in Jordan. However, thousands remain ineligible. So that means, sorry, that means basically they have un, undocumented, we have undocumented refugees. And if you don't have documentation, you cannot access to basic legal services. So that's uh, a core of our work, but also means registering uh, refugees uh, so they can access to formal education and also making sure that if where they are living whether it's a camp or any other type of hosting community they can rely on the authorities and the organizations to protect them and give them assistance as you can imagine because of COVID-19 um, uh, livelihoods, the loss of livelihoods have increased. So that also has been part of our work recently. Um, moving now into the core competencies, uh, basically this means the, the main areas of work that we do in, in Jordan. So as you can see, these are education, information, counseling and legal assistance, livelihoods, shelter and wash and youth. So through decades, we have been providing assistance and protection to displaced populations in this context. And we have developed expertise in these different sectors. Um, NRC is continuing to develop our expertise within these core competencies to ensure that we become a leading global actor in these sectors. By doing this, we will be able to develop appropriate program designs and approaches that adapt to the changing humanitarian context. So how we do put all these competencies together? So we have what we call an integrated approach, which, which means that we closely link the work that other agencies are doing on, on this field to ensure that we work collaboratively and that at the end of the day, we can provide the best response to our beneficiaries. Um, so of course, these are the core competencies, but as you can imagine, we have also the support of many other units in NRC to make this job possible. This includes human resources, logistics, communications, procurement, fleet, monitoring and evaluation, grants, IT and finance. So this means that a lot of different professionals work together in order to make these programs happen. Um, sometimes they might be in an office, in a head office, in a regional office, they, they won't be in the ground necessarily, but their work is as much as important as the ones that are daily in the, in the camps to make sure that we can provide the assistance. So where we operate in Jordan, so you can see in this map the different cities where we work at the moment. Um, we work closely with all the relevant ministers to ensure that the programs are in line with the national priorities and that we can support the national response plan. On the ground, we also work closely with networks of Jordanian community-based organizations and volunteers. And NRC in Jordan is also a determined advocate for Syrian refugees. So we promote and defend their rights and dignity through continuous activities. 
as well as engagement in several coordination platforms. So in this sense, NRC chairs the Jordan INGO Forum and also co-chairs multiple national level working groups, including the protection and shelter working groups. So now just moving into what we have achieved in the different competencies or, or sectors we work in, in terms of edu education, you can see in the presentation where, have be, where we have been actively working and the results we have achieved um, in 2018. Um, so, in close cooperation with the Ministry of Education, NRC works to ensure that all the children have had access to quality education and do not drop out of school. So, we provide remedial education opportunities through NRC learning centers and we ensure that the access to education is done through constructing additional classrooms where needed, welcoming children to school where needed, and assisting parents to register, to register their children in school in coordination with UNICEF. Uh, we also provide Syrian facilitators in camps where the access to school might be difficult, so they can provide training and enhance the quality of education. Um, so yeah, in this picture, you can see an example of one of the classrooms NRC constructed in one of our locations in Irbit. And Moving now to ICLA, which is the acronym for the Information Counseling and Legal Assistance Program. You can also see here the results we achieved. And as I briefly mentioned before, the ICLA program aims to protect the rights of Syrian refugees and vulnerable Jordanians as well, through providing information, counseling, and legal assistance. This means we help Syrian refugees to access important legal and civil documents such as birth, marriage, marriage certificates, and any other kind of ministry registration documents that is going to protect their legal status and allow them to benefit from the essential services that we have. Work rights, including the information on permits. So, Housing rights, just to, to help understand why. So when we were talking about displacement or refugee, so imagine many people, they are forced to, to leave their houses. And maybe luckily after one year or three years, they can come back to their house. But maybe the house now is occupied or maybe the house is not registered anymore to them. So they cannot really access the house. So. NRC and other actors provide this legal help so they can claim back their house and they can move back to their to their place as their right. Um, so livelihoods, shelter and wash. Um, in 2018, NRC launched the initial phase of a large scale cash for work project. So what is cash for work? It's a term we also use a lot in the NGO sector. It means um, moving from the traditional aid you could see in the 90s and the early 2000s where NGOs provide directly the, let's say, food, uh, means, whatever they need. In the new approach, some organizations are taking and it's quite popular in the sector is we provide directly the cash to people so they can use the money on the way they think is better for their house and their families. And this is also a way to help the internal market. So if, if these beneficiaries can use the money to buy anything they need in the local markets where they live, this is also helping the economy of the community. So we launched this in 2018, and we worked in, in order to support 2,800 Syrians and Jordanians that had short-term employment over the next two years. In addition to this, NRC also launched a project to support agribusiness and producers. So this is about farming and making sure that also it is uh, constructing for a future more green. Um, finally, NRC provides vocational training uh, and employment preparation training for youth in camps and host communities. So 
to help them to set their careers and to, to look for opportunities in the future. Um, yeah, this is a picture, just a sample of the livelihood shelter and wash work that's been done in our camps. And this is Satari Refugee Camp in Jordan. It's one of the biggest uh, refugee camps and many actors work collaboratively here, um, as you can see in the picture. Um, yeah, as briefly touched uh, in terms of youth, um, youth benefits from education opportunities, vocational training and life skills classes. So in order to increase their chances of finding unemployment, NRC offers this employability skills training and supports them to identify opportunities through the private sector or through offering them small grants to help them start their businesses. Um, youth is further more supported to use their skills to, uh, to identify and address needs in their communities through designing and leading social initiatives. Um, finally, in Saturday Camp, um, NRC has set up a produ production unit for young tailors to produce material for the wider humanitarian community. And this has been such a successful initiative and they have managed to tailor their materials, sell them and make money out of it to support the provision of further activities in the camp, by schools, etc. Mm, you can see an example of a vocational training here. So in terms of outcomes, you can see the people in need that received our assistance in 2019 in Jordan. And you can see as well here, the main donors Jordan works, sorry, NRC works with in Jordan. So now we can move to the section that I think is also very interesting for the audience today. So why NRC is an employer of choice? Uh, how can you join Jordan and sorry, NRC and NRC Jordan? And how is it working in NRC? So um, working in NRC offers you the opportunity to be a change maker for displaced people. We are looking for people who is passionate about helping refugees and people forced to, feel, to flee. And if you're one of those, we offer you the opportunity to do uh, demanding and professional work, often in challenging contexts. NRC is very focused on quality. So in the field, our work, we work hard to solve challenges in demanding environments, often in hard to reach areas. Many areas where other organizations cannot go because they don't have the specialty or they don't have the means. NRC is actually specialized in reaching hard hard to reach areas um, where you can see on the news where the worst unfortunate situations are happening, armed conflicts. So NRC objective is to be there and provide the support to the affected people by conflict. So we work professionally with respect for all and focus on safety and teamwork. So if you join NRC, you will learn fast in a professional setting and you will join a work culture that empowers every employee to share ideas and take responsibility. In NRC, we think outside of the box and we encourage ideas and give responsibility to all employees at all levels to help solve the complex issues that we may face. You will have many opportunities to be heard and to, to take initiative if you work in NRC. Um, and now, just to give you an example of someone who joined NRC in Jordan. So we have a, a career story from Rana Salem, who is a club project coordinator in NRC Jordan. Um, so she's a 30 year old Jordanian born to Palestinian refugees in Jordan. She's an experienced project leader who switched from the private sector to the humanitarian sector in 2012 and joined NRC in 2016. She has a bachelor degree in industrial engineering and a master's in administration. And she believes that implementing the best professional practices as well as building connections is essential to succeed. With her team, 
She engages community-based organizations to help Syrian refugees manage their citizen, citizenship and legal right issues. Um, but how, how did she go from, from private sector to humanitarian sector? That can be challenging sometimes, right? If you don't have that first experience or if you don't have experience in our sector, how to jump in. So we interviewed her, so she told us her story. And she, as I said, she had this bachelor degree in industrial engineering and she started a career in the private sector for one year and then as a quality control engineer for two years and then she went to management consulting and so she learned the best practices for the from the private sector and she liked it but in a way she said she also felt empty because she realized that getting more money for herself and for her company was not enough for her she expected more from life so that's why in 2012 she decided to resign with the intention of entering the humanitarian sector and when she resigned, she had no job inside. And she had never volunteered before. She really had no idea what a humanitarian job was, nor how she would react to working in the sector. And unfortunately, none of her colleagues were supportive. So she remembers being afraid that she might regret this decision. But two weeks after she resigned, a Jordanian organization offered her a challenging opportunity. Uh, this is to become project manager of a community-based rehabilitation project serving people with disabilities. And in two and a half years, starting from scratch, she led a, a team of 12 people to, lead, to build sorry, a life-changing service that since then has helped more than 1,500 individuals. So she especially remembers um, um, a little girl with a physical disability when she was working in in that position and when she she thinks back on the two years the experience she had and how thanks to this work the girl finally was able to overcome her disability and be able to walk again that was such a such a life-changing experience for her that made her realize that this is what she wanted to do in, in her life in her work life so at the end of her project with this small organization she decided to took a master's degree in administration. And at the end of that master's in 2016, she joined the NRC as ICLA project coordinator. Um, and again, she wanted to support Syrian refugees confronted, confronted by the same difficulties and sufferings that her family has faced when, when she was settled in Jordan as a Palestinian refugee. Today, there are 100, 40,000 refugees in the Mafrak area. Half of them are living in the camp of Satari and half within host communities. The original population was just 60,000 people. And this area is among the poorest areas of Jordan. So you can imagine the struggle. So that's why her first responsibility when she initiated the program was to establish an NRC office and to assess the humanitarian needs. When reaching out to the Syrian refugees, they noticed that many were living in informal tended settlements, doing agricultural work, and their children were working too. So there were almost no schools or facilities there. So they began to provide ICLA services, opening a door for the most vulnerable people in Jordan. And today, her job consists in leading all the ICLA projects in this region, and her team has grown to 18 staff. They cover issue, issues such as administrative registration, civil documentation, tenancy rights, and work rights. And they also provide refugees with legal information sessions and counseling, and representation in the court if they need to. Um, so to do this work, they partner with 12 community-based organizations. Um, and they also organize monthly theater events to deliver legal information to the Syrian refugees that can come to watch. So this is just an example of the work she's been able to do with NRC. And again, you can see a story of a, of a team that is committed, passionate about their work. And you know, in NRC, in our culture, being a manager 
it still implies that people I mean, not in our, I mean, in general, in general culture, working life culture in any company or any organization you can go. Uh, being a manager sometimes means that people have to be afraid of you. But luckily, and that's what um, she shared with us when we interviewed her, during her years of experience, she has learned and she has been mentored to, to be a, a great leader someone who believes that building trust and relationships is essential to succeed. And this is one of the key qualities we are looking in people when we are recruiting someone. So we want young leaders that put an emphasis on trust and building relationships with all the actors that can work collaboratively in, in our missions. So uh, this is a collaboratively environment where we energize each other from our ideas and by sharing our passion. So a great, um, a great area and a great focus of NRC when it comes to employee and stuff is safety, security and health. So we see safety, security and health not, so, not only as a legal but also as a moral obligation to provide the most safe and secure working conditions for our employees. As I said before, sometimes we work in very dangerous locations, difficult, difficult situations, but NRC has a real strong focus on safety and, and security for our, our staff. So we have in place policies and systems to make sure that there's a risk assessment and a reporting system to manage any type of crisis. And if you are successful and if you are appointed to NRC as part of your welcome package and as part of your induction, you will receive all this information. I remember myself when I joined the NRC um, and I was going to be deployed to, to Amman. So before coming to Amman, I had hundreds of information about the context, about how should I behave, how should I react to any type of challenge. And it's all, it, it is all based on data and on what has been happening in the past and we have a team that gives daily updates on all the context we work in so you are constantly informed and you you always know what to do so you never panic or or feel like you can handle it but if you do there's also the right for you to simply resign and not go to, to a mission if you think it's too dangerous for you so in terms of compensation and benefits, our contract lengths vary. So they can be from fixed term to open-ended. Um, they are determined in line with the needs and funding of our programs. So this is very important um, in, in all the NGOs and organizations. The contract length, you might think sometimes, why they do advertise only for one year or for six months or for two months? <laughs> How are they gonna do the work in two months? So this is because the, the contract is linked to the funding we have for the projects and for the mission itself. So that's why the contract length is very short sometimes because let's say the UN or whoever has only given funds for two months. So this project has to be concluded in two months. And that's why the contract length can, can be very different. And sometimes you have open-ended contracts, sometimes you have two years, one year. Um, so NRC contracts um, are normally subject to extension. Um, and in, in the adverts itself, you would see between brackets renewable. That means that contract is more of an open-ended position, let's say in a way that is more stable and because perhaps it's here in an office position that is regular and is not subject to a specific funding. Um, but also we have um, NORCAP, which is called, which is the name we give for deployment contracts. Deployment contracts are usually lasting six months. And this is linked to the roster I was mentioning before. So we send, we have a database of specialists in their fields. And when we need um, someone to be sent to a mission, we will look through our database and offer this temporary position. Which is, which is a great opportunity as well for, for employees to build their experience. So 
following a principle of internal equity, all jobs in NRC are evaluated and graded using a global grade profiling structure. That means that for each job and grade, we offer the same salary in line with the local market. So it's totally equal. You have two people doing the same job, they will have the same salary. The only way the salary could be different is because someone is promoted to a newer position or has let's say more than two years of service, so they are offered a new contract with a higher salary. But to everyone starting in NRC, we have a global grading structure that applies equally to any employee who is appointed. So in the spirit of the humanitarian work that we do, we do not offer salaries at the top end of the market, but still we take into account the need to provide a living wage within each country. So this means that each country has allowances for employees and also more benefits that include social protection um, that we offer in accordance to the local labor law. And also of course, holidays, sick pay, parental leave, um, pensions, for national staff that are affiliated to local laws and systems and insurance. So all staff are covered by insurance. Of course, you can find now much more information about the specifics on these in the NRC website. So if you search for this in the internet, you will find more information. And moving on to the next. So what are the employment opportunities? I know um, is the first thing when you finish um, your master's or your, or your degree. So what type of um, specialists are we looking in NRC? Well, so we recruit for local and international staff. 90% of our staff are national employees. And many uh, were themselves uh, once uh, forcibly displaced people. So this gives us a an, an unique insight into the environment we work. Um, in recruiting, we focus very much on candidates who have the relevant experience. So uh, the required qualifications will be always mentioned in, in the job offer or in the job advert. So you will always have a section that speaks about qualifications and we will specify there the education level, certifications or diplomas that are appropriate for each job and location. English is our working language. Um, and fluency expectations grow with the increasing responsibility of the position, but for some locations, also it's uh, required to be fluent in Arab, French or Spanish. So most positions require the willingness to travel to the field. So it's also important to note that it's such a competitive market. And it's um, when we do recruitment in NRC, we often have such a competitive pool. So that means that sometimes um, there, there will be applications that don't meet the, the minimum qualifications or the standards we're looking for, and they won't be considered on that occasion. But that doesn't mean that you will never be considered for a, for an, for a position in NRC. That means that that specific opportunity didn't work out for the experience you had. But of course, um, you are more than welcome to apply for another opportunity that meets your criteria. So I always advise candidates to not let a specific outcome um, undermine you. Because myself, I, I had in the, in the past um, many recruitments that didn't work out for me and I didn't get the job. But if you keep applying for positions and improving your CV, it's very important that you update your CV regularly and that you reflect, reflect all the information that we're looking for. That is gonna increase your chances for sure. And the first step is the, the, the CV. So um, yeah, in the question and action, in the, sorry, in the last section of questions, I'm happy to, to answer any questions around this area because um, as a recruiter, I can, I can give you advice on how to best approach it. Of course, we also look for people who share our values. And we have uh, what we call a code of conduct. So this is basically our guiding principles for our employees. 
is a is a binding engagement, which means it's basically when you sign the contract with us, you're also signing to this code of conduct. Uh, so how to join us? Finally, <laughs> the recruitment process in Norwegian Refugee Council, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's hard. We have a lot of stages. So first of all, we do a screening of all the applications. Second of all, we have assessments and tests. What is this? So this is depends on the position. Some positions that are more technical, you will have a technical assessment, let's say finance or logistics. So you will have to write on your computer uh, your response to exercise uh, that are uh, work sample a scenario. So let's say you go to the field and you find this in the camp and what would you do and blah, blah. Um, this can take around one, two hours and you, you do this from your home. So it's comfortable, easy. You just need internet connection. Um, some other assessments, especially for, uh, let's say, more uh, um, communications, uh, advocacy positions, more senior positions might require video assessments. So we will ask you to pretend that you are recording yourself, let's say, media, for any media that wants to do an interview and you will have to impersonate that role and talk about NRC, what what is NRC doing in the field. So we also do um, psychometrical tests, but that's very few occasions and it's uh, for very senior positions like country directors. Basically, this is personality test. So we assess that your personality is what we're looking for in a leader. Um, after the assessments, we typically have one or two interviews. And this interview will have um, multiple panel, which means someone from HR, normally a recruiter, um, the hiring manager, so the person who is looking for, for you, <laughs> um, and a technical specialist who is going to support the process from a technical perspective. Uh, after that interview finishes and um, before we can make a hiring decision, it's very important to know that NRC mm, puts a lot of value on doing a vetting and a background check on all the applicants because we have to make sure that whoever is joining our organization is not gonna harm the people we're trying to help. So that's why we do a background check and that's before we can make an offer. Um, of course, we will ask you your consent and we will ask you your consent to contact references. Um, after that, if everything goes well, then you will receive a job offer. And when you accept the job offer, you will receive a contract. So again, there's a lot more information about this process in the career site, and I recommend you all to visit. And we're coming to an end. So yeah, I think now it's the time. If you have any questions, we have 15 minutes. I'm more than happy to start the stop talking <laughs> and listen to you. So, so Esme, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, uh, unfortunately, we're gonna have less, a little bit less than 15 minutes because we, we will need to move to the next session before then. But I wanted to, um, okay, I see that Lama put the, the correct career uh, link. Thank you, Lama. Uh, and I've also okay. put, uh, and I'm gonna put it again now, the link to the NRC page on Localized. And I do know right. that Ismail and the others from his team are around there if you do have any questions that we have not had the chance to answer uh, now uh, please do feel free to reach out to them on the page on localized to ask them a question ismail I, I i first wanted to thank you guys very much i mean the work that you guys do is extremely important as you mentioned it's it's tough work uh, but i think um, but i think it's really it's it's really impactful work and you really feel or see the results of the work that you do firsthand, which is something uh, that, that you don't get in many organizations. So there's, it's tough, I know, but there's a lot of rewards uh, and personal fulfillment that you can get that you cannot really get in other kinds of, uh, other kinds of jobs. Let me, let me just, um, the, the, so, so I, I want you to like, to, to close uh, the session, I want you to give um, students an idea of what they can do to stand out as they are applying to NRC. I know the process is long, as you mentioned. What can a student specifically do 
to stand out in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, when they're applying to a role with you. And I want you to, to finish off with, because I know you mentioned short-term uh, contracts. And mm -hmm. this could be a very interesting opportunity, particularly maybe when the economy is not doing great, so job opportunities are not a lot. Um, that could be opportunities for people to join the organization on a shorter term kind of uh, project. And I'd love to hear from you, are these kinds of opportunities available? Do you recommend them uh, or not? Yes, great, thank you. Great, so I'll start with the first topic about the how to stand out, right? And how to, yes. to make sure that you maximize your chances of getting an opportunity. So the, the first step um, is your, your CV, your experience. Um, but we all have experience or, or we, are, we all have areas where we could be better and develop more. But it's very important how you sell the experience you already have. And I, I have seen many times uh, people who has uh, excellent experience and a great CV, but they haven't included enough information to show out that experience. And, and that's why in the presentation I was mentioning, it's very important to look at the qualifications we're working, we're looking for, because those are the keywords um, you should look in your experience and check if you have it. And if you have it, make sure that it stands out in your application. So you can reflect this in two ways, in your cover letter, which you have to make sure that you prepare a cover letter for the organization you're looking to work for and that captures your motivation, but also the key experience we're looking for. And then in your CV. So make sure that your CV is very well updated and has all the key points we're looking for if that's the experience that you have. So that's a good way. The, the other way is be out in the market, try to check where you can, such as joining these career fairs, making connections, making sure you ask people uh, about if they know about opportunities, you ask them to take them to take into account if they're looking for someone. And in that way, you're starting, you're starting building your network. LinkedIn is very important as well. It's um, a tool um, many organizations use to look for, for employees at all levels. So have an updated LinkedIn profile and make sure that you are selling the best version of yourself. And the second, well, not sure if I answered the question. If there's any follow-up question, let me know. And for the short-term opportunities. So yeah, we, we do have every now and then this type of opportunities. So I do recommend you to, to follow us on Twitter because there you will have uh, constant updates on all the opportunities we have in NRC, and then you can quickly identify, this is right up my alley. So it's my level, it's a short-term opportunity, I can, I can get it easily, so go for it. We, in, in our team, for instance, we had um, very recently um, very junior um, positions that were a great opportunity for graduates in the HR team where I'm working. And yeah, that was such a great opportunity for them to start working with us, get a great experience. It was a short-term contract, uh, but then thanks to that experience, they also managed to increase their skills, their knowledge, and pursue a career further with other organizations and maybe then come back to NRC again. Great, thank you, Ismail. Um, uh, actually, I'm gonna ask one other question. Do you recommend that people then or um, get um, professional or private sector experience first and then join NRC? That way they'll have g gained some more experience. And finally, I know I, I say that before, but finally we have a, a comment about what if there are no open vacancies at the moment? What can students do to kind of go into a pipeline of potential candidates? Okay, so uh, for the first question, I think that's a personal decision. So I will talk from what I have seen and from my personal experience. So from what I have seen, it's definitely helpful to have to enter the private sector first. And you know, they have a lot of um, internships and a lot of opportunities uh, to just start from zero and to build a bit of your basic uh, employment skills. And once you get them, it's much easier to then go for a job with an NGO such as NRC or others. 
um, but also from my personal experience, I the way I got into the sector was by volunteering with an NGO. So sometimes you can find a volunteering opportunities with smaller NGOs that they are in your community or that they are nearby the areas you know, and they offer you volunteering opportunities. Volunteering opportunities that might not be maybe exactly what you are looking to do for in your life, or maybe you are overqualified for them. But that little experience is gonna really help you to then get a job with uh, another NGOs like NRC or others that are looking for more qualified people. Um, and your second question was about so how what's about what's about how how can they get um, like a pipeline? A pipeline. They... If there's no vacancies currently now, how what can people do to like get into a pipeline of potential? Right. So I know it's a project um, in the future to have like um, a database, like a um, database of talent, let's say of candidates. At the moment, what what do we can recommend to to anyone who is interested in working with us it's again to to follow us on twitter and they will have there all the vacancies that we advertise in terms of sending cvs to a specific place i wouldn't say that because it would be useless because at the moment we don't have that platform let's say but as soon as um, this project is um, there and we have that i will be happy to share but of course um, Follow us on, on all the social media, follow us on LinkedIn. And if you find this is a great opportunity for you, apply for it. And if you need some advice, you can always reach out to us in the social media and we will try to advise where possible. Again, this is always very personal decisions, very personal situations. We cannot tell you, yes, go for it. This is the job of your life. You have to decide that. But we are more than happy to, to help where possible. Great, Ismail. Thank you so much for your time. Again, I, I, I'm really, uh, uh, um, the kind of work that you do is really, really very impressive. Uh, there's a ton of questions that I, that I think we haven't yet gone through. So please, guys, I'm, I'm recommending, please go to the NRC page on Localized uh, now because you'll be able to reach out to the team there and they will be able to answer uh, all your questions. Uh, again, thank you very much, NRC team. Thank you everybody that participated.